Hello, true duelists. My name's Craig Fee, and welcome to the Yu-Gi-Oh! Update. This past weekend was not only the first under our new format, but also the first premier event to be played under said new format. So, no more Link Karibo, no more Baron de Fleur, and no more Borolode Savage. And full access to the entirety of the Snake Eye engine that was phenomenal regardless of those three cards. <laughs> And case in point, Snake Eye did pretty damn well at this event. Not even gonna tickle you with the lead as a news guy should. Am I allowed to say that? Probably not. Thanks to the Konami blog, we do have the chance to look at the top tables though as they were progressing, which shows off more broadly what was played in its entirety, because I don't think anyone was shocked that Snake Eye was going to be popular. Take for example, in round five, this is what made up the top 20 tables, with Snake Eye being dominant, but Voiceless Voice being a strong second, and Fire King variants of Snake Eye decks coming in at a low 7%, relatively speaking. But that's at the top tables in round five, and this is the top tables in round 11. So, you know, when you get to the more final standings before top cut, you get more of what you might expect, or dread, depending on how it is you feel about Snake Eye cards. Because by round 11, the top tables were made up of more than 50% fire, with Fire King Snake Eye at 20%, just beating out the Pure Variant 17, and the new popular Kashtira variant making up 15%. Trailing these were Voiceless Voice and some Branded, because uh, they didn't touch the Puppet Lock on this ban list either, or, you know, anything to do with Runic Stun or any of that shit, so it's, it's still popular. You won't believe it, the format's pretty similar after minimal hits. As to how the top 32 conversion went, well, Snake Eye Pure did even better. Pure taking 31% of top cut in 32, and Cash Tira variants following with 19%, and Fire King only getting 10%, falling off much like the British King will in about three or so months. So all in all, Snake Eye decks made up about 60% of top 32, which is just marginally below tier zero. Isn't that fun? There were some other funsies decks though, like Runic Stun and Flew on to Rees in the top 32. That's, that's exciting, isn't it? That makes you want to play the game, right? Look, man, there's things like Runic Plunder getting a top spot in top 32, which I've been told is plunderstandable, which I'm just going to have to live with that word in my head for the rest of my life. But that's not really a new deck, so I, I think it's neat to see it doing well, but it's, it, yep, sure thing. And Pearly, those things are cute still. I like that deck. That dominance, of course, of Snake Eye did hold strong for the rest of the top tables, with all three variants of Snake Eye being the top three decks for representation, through top 16 and top eight being all Snake Eye variants, except for the lone branded hero and a Labyrinth player. Now, it goes without saying, there were some great accomplishments made by all top cut players, but you know I gotta mention YouTube's own DB Grinder, who got top four with his Snake Eye list, providing some great feature matches to watch, and of course, best of all, the tweet of his celebration dinner. So, of course, a hearty congrats to him. As they say, you'll love to see it. A huge congrats as well to Jack Zhao, who was playing his first YCS, as I understand it, bringing Labyrinth all the way to second place. That finals match was pretty damn awesome to watch, with games one and two being an awesome showcase from both decks, and in a heartbreaking misplay in game three in the finals after not using back Jack's effect before starting his turn, the game would ultimately be decided and won by his opponent. Cam the Man Neil would win the event with his Snake Eye deck, which looks shockingly similar to the list that we've seen before the ban list, just with slight changes to exactly one level eight synchro, one level 10 synchro, and a particular link one. <laughs> that's, not, that's not a critique of the deck or the building or anything of that to say, just an observation of how little this changed between the two formats as of now. Uh, yeah, extended long name N gets of course the hugest of congratulations with him being a very accomplished player up until this point with multiple tops across UDSs and YCSs and this being his first true win, his first place title. As said earlier, you'll love to see it. And you love to hear his post game interview as Cam the Man is a man of few words as it turns out and the stream was really fond of this in general I think because you might be wondering what the hell it is that's going on uh, with everyone watching the stream, they were wondering with you. I do the camera motion as well, but uh, unlike Konami, I can't afford a cameraman, so I just get to play the Master Duel music loudly over the segment and hope it works out. 
Oh, and of course, shout outs to Levi Dudley, who got fourth place at the event. He's on the far right in this picture, holding up the exactly nothing he got in terms of prize cards. I don't know if that's been common thus far with top four pictures, but I respect the hell out of it. And fourth place at a nearly 1800 player event is still a damn good accomplishment. But as for what this means for the game, it's a little hard to say. There wasn't exactly a ton of time to prep for this format relative to the changes on the list, and the changes on the list were fairly minimal in the grandest of schemes relative to the power of the decks that were already at play. So I don't know if this is truly an absolute nothing burger of a list, or if we just haven't had enough time to really get cooking, so to say. Regardless, Legacy of Destruction will be dropping today as I release this video, so Tempai will probably throw something of a wrench in the current format. Maybe not, but it's between that and the lack of summon limit, and then the addition you know, of Tenpai, I do think this format will be a better one overall. Snake Eye will still be a problem, but in due time they will be hit, because the best deck always gets hit at some point, and at least now when they go, the horse and summon limit have already gone with them. That small copium, small positive. I'm on the positive for the ban list, and I hope you are too. And if not, call me an idiot. Go ahead, it helps the algorithm. Comments are fantastic. The next YCS isn't until this coming weekend, and by this I mean the following weekend. Next weekend, what is reading? The word says next, and I just, <laughs> I can't say that word, it makes too much sense. YCS Rio de Janeiro will be taking place on May 4th and 5th, is the point I'm trying to get to. So that's when we can get a more interesting look at what else might have changed in these two weeks, on top of the other fact that, you know, Tenpai will be a thing too. So stay tuned for that, folks. There's hope, allegedly. In some other news, Master Duel got a ban list as well that did actually address the Snake Eye meta, with semi-limits to both Snake Eye Ash and Wanted, and a limit to Super Heavy Samurai Soul Piercer. So it's still Snake Eye's the dominant deck in Master Duel too, but marginally less consistent than current Snake Eye. Does this fix the format? No, but some do prefer this just because something with the word Snake Eye in it ended up on the ban list. So. I, I, I disagree, I find these to be very meaningless, but it is, it is something, so to each their own. Just slightly less snake eyes, that'll do it. Once again, just kinda trying to lightly farm bait some rage comments for the algorithm. This one will be coming into effect on May 1st or next Wednesday if you're watching this video when it comes out. And in other Master Duel news, there's also a new selection pack promoting flu on to Rees because Konami wants people to really just hate playing the game, I guess. I don't know, but I do know that flu gets bullied on every goddamn time and I fully support that. It's completely justified, dude. Have you seen these stupid things? Do they live in your house? This shit will ruin your life, it'll ruin your duel, and I will gladly and proudly support the immediate abuse of this son of a bitch every single time I can. And moving on to some news from the EU, there was concern this week over the release of Battles of Legend Terminal Revenge in Europe. As on the website for Konami's product, the date of release was changed from the initial June 20th this year to a TBA, a sign which some took as proof to mean that the product may be cancelled in Europe, much like the Speed Duel box previously this year. And I initially wrote up a whole thing about how genuinely terrible that would be, because all the memes about no European YCSs are one thing, but genuinely not getting the new product featuring nostalgia bait that isn't DM for once is about as shitty as it can get if you want players to play your game. But Konami did something utterly unprecedented this week, and I'm not even sure they were capable of it prior to seeing it with my own eyes. They communicated with the fan base, the player base, whatever the hell we are. In a tweet from their official European account, they came out and said that it was just a glitch and the set will be releasing on the 20th as intended and there's no need to worry. Broadly, there's a lesson here for all of us not to assume the worst and wait for confirmations from the company before blindly following rumors and social media posts. And more importantly than that, a lesson for me to not write scripts too far ahead because all of that effort, down the drain, gone. We missed out on a patented Craig Fee rant about how awful things are and just bitching and complaining. Truly, that's the real tragedy behind all of this. But uh, yeah, no worries for Europe yet. You don't get events anymore, but you do still get the cards. For now. 
And in some merchandise news, Legacy of Destruction will be releasing with a special edition box, as it turns out, a little box of four packs of lead that, that's, and a nice little bonus token. Special editions of old used to come with two of four reprint cards of sometimes very sought after cards or other times just good ones. Hell, there was one that came with one of two previous Shonen Jump cards. But now you can just look forward to an anime token because woke. <laughs> no, 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 I'm just, I just saying. I don't, I don't care personally, but if you're hyped on these anime tokens from the OCG, this is where you can get them. And if you're upset by this because you just want to see me complain, then fucking come on, dude. We all, we all know that's happening. Let's be fucking real here. Why can't we get an adventure token? or a sword soul token, or a plunder token, or a photon token, or a token of any monster that still needs them, of which there are plenty, just give me an adventure token that's literally just a mirror printed on the card to symbolize the fact that it's me, I'm the adventurer. And then we can ban the token after it gets misused to read the opponent's hand or some shit, because that would be funny. But no, Yugi Moto for the 647th time, and 648th time, he's in this fucking thing twice. What? Come on, dude. Oh my god. It's just, it's just Yugi Moto all, all the fucking way down. And so that'll wrap it up. Shoutouts as always this week go to the LIFD magnetic display. The best way to support my channel and the true duelist approved way to show off the fact that, yep, it's still Snake Eye, baby. Whether you want to support me by clicking the discount code in the description or typing it in at the checkout, it's YGOSTRATS15. That'd be greatly appreciated. And as said, uh, every, every like, every dollar spent goes towards healing me of my ailment because when I was 16 I won a great battle and in that moment I felt that I would live to be a hundred and now I know that I'm fucking pissed because I still have a fucking cold and it sucks dick and I don't like it <laughs> oh my god so yeah thanks to LIFD for the support as always and thank you for watching as always I've been your host Gregory Feganite make sure you subscribe not only will you be impressing that smoking Italian wife you'll become a true duelist and at some point I won't sound so goddamn congested see you next week folks so um, we're, we're done now <laughs> Might even cut that. Might even cut that.